Thank you very much for joining us here at Woodwork Therapy. In this video, we're going to be going over the Elgo Laser DIY Kit, which is a do-it-yourself upgrade kind of a kit. So this kit actually allows you, in theory, to go out and purchase additional components as time goes on in order to be able to upgrade the unit, being at longer beds or a uh, new laser module that's more powerful than the one you have, or even a main board uh, that they have for the, they're going to be coming out with these. So uh, that's what we're going to be going over in our review today. Um, like I always tell everybody, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification icon. We want to see you back here for all of our woodworking videos and uh, some of this laser stuff, which is pretty cool. So on that note, let's get to the review. Okay, so for this first part, we're going to go into what's in the box. I know you're like, well, there's a laser in the box and that, but there's actually a lot more. So we're going we're gonna to go into that first. So let's get to that. When you first open up the box, the first thing you're going to notice is a laser engraving user manual and a laser engraving consumables package, which we're going to get into right now. The laser engraver consumables package comes with some zip ties for your cable management, a brush for brushing away debris, uh, some plastic uh, cards, I think probably for like business cards or something like that, and a piece of acrylic that's safe for the use in lasers. They also throw in a complementary piece of what appears to be probably a balsa, maybe a basswood kind of a blank. Looks like it's about three millimeters. And this is just a quick shot of what it looks like when everything's still kind of more or less packed in the box for the equipment at least. And this is more or less what it looks like when you kind of take everything out of the box and just lay it out on your table. Minus the pencil sharpener and the spray gun, of course. So first up, we have the rails that are part of the X-frame rails that you're going to be using to go and build the machine. And we have the laser uh, XY uh, movement device, or in essence, the thing that goes along the tracks on the laser. This also, of course, will hold the laser as well. Starting from left to right, we have the brains of the unit, the laser controller, uh, in the middle, we have the power supply. To the right, we have the laser uh, module. That's a 5.5 watt module. Um, down below that, of course, we have some safety glasses uh, for the laser. Uh, below that, we have our brackets for the frame. Uh, to the left of that, we also have the belt. A little clipping there. You can see of the USB cable as well. Down here, we have the uh, four feet for the uh, bottom of the frame. This is actually really nice because it lifts that frame up. Uh, along with the tools package to the right, to the left we have some miscellaneous screws and fasteners that are used for constructing the frame. And then we have a little package of sampler items, some keychains, a bottle opener, and a coaster. All right, so as you can see, obviously we've already built this. Let's go ahead and actually show you what we did to build it. So here we go. So I just wanted to go and run through some of the setup uh, that goes into this. Uh, as you can see, the X-frames are uh, pretty easy to put together. It's just basically four screws and they're pretty much ready to go. Um, moving along forward is setting up the uh, I guess XY controller, basically the motor that allows it to run up and down the track and back and forth and whatnot for the laser. Uh, as you can see, that's pretty easy to slide on. Brackets, basically you're just going to go and throw those on all four corners and uh, throw a few couple of screws in there and you're pretty much off to the races, so not much to learn there. Uh, and then, as you can see here, we have a the feet that go into the alternate pegs. You get a couple of different options there. Some uh, stuff here to kind of keep you from bumping yourself on the edges. So that's relatively simple. This also will help in a later step as well, by the way. So it's not just for decoration. And here on this part, we can actually see the belt being put in and basically it just slides over 
the top part there and then just kind of weaves through underneath the wheels and therefore it can get pulled along and do what it needs to do and as you can see we're pulling that through those little red parts that we just installed and then just put a little screw in to kind of tighten the belt down and then you do want to give a little bit of torque on the opposing end so that way uh, the belt is uh, snug not tight you don't need it like ultra tight but you do want it snug uh, so that way it doesn't wind up uh, slipping or anything then this here that you're seeing being installed this is the bracket for uh, the limit switch this is really important because this actually keeps the machine from going too far and crashing into the sides because we definitely wouldn't want that and this of course is the switch itself and as you can see it's just four tiny little screws just to kind of get your rock and a roll in there and then just just quick screw down and you're pretty much done at that point The next part is just installing the laser module that just slides right in and then you just tighten it down with a little thumb screw on the right there, which is actually separate in the packages by the way, just for reference purposes. This you just have to get it kind of in the groove and then push the screws straight through the back. As you notice it has some little ridges right there where it actually slides into the bracket itself. And then uh, put the limit switches on. I actually wound up using some uh, pliers for this just to kind of push them on because they were a little bit on the tight side, which there's nothing wrong with that. This means it's a good solid connection. And this is pretty much universal of all of the limit switches uh, that seem to really help out. So this is uh, one of the switches up here. This is basically for that uh, left-right control uh, to kind of keep that on there. As you saw, we were using some of those clamps. This just pops in, it only goes in one way, and then you just slide it right through here. And uh, that allows it to uh, sit in there and not slide all around the place. And that's actually kind of a nice little feature that's built into the unit itself. Then it's just a matter of really plugging in the motors. Uh, they only, again, plug in one direction, so that makes it extremely easy to assemble, as you'll see here on all of these. Then for the zip ties, uh, basically you want to kind of do a similar pattern to like what we're doing here in the video. Uh, you'll do one up here by the control box, and then once you're done zipping it on, uh, then I do actually recommend using some pliers to give it a little bit extra torque to really hold it on there, and then just clip off the end. You don't want to leave those loose ends out there because they can get uh, in the way of things, as they say. Then up here, there's a little tiny hole right here next to the motor. And you just slide it right through there, and then again, just zip it on and clip it. Zip it and clip it. There you go. There's something fun. And the last one, this one kind of fits in a little awkwardly. It's a little hard to get in at first, but once you get it through, again, just same thing. Zip it and clip it. You can see that did require some fidgeting there to get that in there. Then we're just going to install the antenna. Nothing really too interesting there on that part. Gives you your Wi-Fi. And then plug in the power. And now we can run our uh, power on test uh, as soon as that's all plugged in there. So we're going to do that right now. All right, everybody's favorite part of a laser review. We're going to be talking about burning. And quite frankly, how well does it burn? So uh, we use light burn to uh, make these. So we're going to be going over uh, how these uh, came out. And also, we will be going over uh, how well it engraves and what speeds you can really truly get out of it. So here we go. When we're talking maximum threshold, we're talking what is the cutting capacity of the actual laser. So this is a chart of minimums, basically. So right here we have two millimeter basswood um, and we notice that our fastest cut is 300 and we can cut as low as the power of 90. Any of you who used light burn know, uh, know about this little tool here. Obviously I made it a little bit more fancy at the top but you get the kind of the idea. 
Uh, best engraving on basswood. Looks like it's probably right around about 1,100, which means we probably could go a lot faster. Uh, so that is something to kind of keep in mind as the machine does have significantly faster cutting capabilities. On the three millimeter birch, uh, we were able to get down to uh, 200 uh, with a power of 80. And keep in mind, this is with a really clean lens. So if your lens gets a little dirty, you might have to go into more around this range. So it is kind of sensitive to that. Uh, these are all one pass, by the way, just so you know. Uh, this is another one pass here on three millimeter walnut, which is actually really hard for even uh, slightly more powerful machines to cut. And uh, we never made it through on one pass. But that being said, anyone who's used to using a laser knows sometimes one pass is not the answer. So we did a four pass. Uh, just because the reason really, obviously, the median between one and four, this made the most sense. So on this one here, we're able to cut out at 300 at 90% uh, power for our fastest uh, setting. So if you're trying to get something done in a hurry, that's going to definitely get the job done. So I just wanted to go over that a little bit with you, just kind of give you a little bit of an idea. Um, remember, all of this is relative, really, when it comes down to it the machine's general performance is going to be based on this and what, how we cut and engrave everything in this video is basically based on this information so if you know all that that's good to go um, we'll probably post some videos or rather not videos but uh, some images of this up on our instagram as well so um, all right let's get on to the next part okay so enough fooling around here so now you know how it burns now you know what comes in the kit and you've seen some of the assembly by now um, how does it actually do on an actual project? Well, let's throw some stuff at it and see how it does. All right, so what are my final thoughts on this machine? Well, it's a laser. It's a really good laser, actually, um, especially considering its price point. It's almost 50% cheaper than most of its competition, or aroundabouts, give or take. Um, it's not too terrible to uh, put together. Um, there were, there, it's a little bit more difficult because of the fact that it's an X-frame in comparison to like a pre-made frame, but that's actually also kind of its advantage, too. See, since it's an X-frame, that makes this a little bit more easy to expand looking forward, where some of the more proprietary frames, they don't have that ability. So I know on this unit, uh, they're going to be coming out with a kit that allows you to double the amount of uh, length of the bay. Uh, that's actually going to be really a big deal, I think, in my opinion, especially if you want to do a larger format. Um, so if you're getting a little bit more professional, there you go. Um, they're going to have another deal that's going to allow you to move uh, from this 5-watt laser up to a 10-watt laser. Uh, and that's going to be coming out here, I believe, in December of 2023. So if you're watching this after that point, then it's probably already out. Um, 
Another thing too is that they're talking about uh, making it so you can upgrade the brains of this device, so the actual uh, the actual motherboard and whatnot of its of itself. Uh, that's actually pretty cool because you know as things uh, get older, they sometimes die. Maybe you want to go with a 40 watt laser. Maybe that's something that's available for this machine in the future, or a 22 watt or something like that. Um, they haven't told me that those are going to be released just yet, but what I do know is the fact that it's the whole concept behind this is that you're doing it yourself. You're able to build it yourself, uh, which is really, really nice. Um, yeah, overall, I, I'd have to say that I'm pretty impressed with the machine. I think it's a really well-designed machine. I think the concept behind it is the most exciting component of it. I mean, it fires just like a $600 laser fires. It fires just like a $1,000 laser fires um, that are running in that 5.5 watt region. So all these expensive brands that are out there, it seems to keep perfect pace with them. I didn't see anything different about it. And I'm sure if you've seen any of those lasers and you've seen their burn tests, you'll know this is basically doing the same job for a fraction of the price. So, I mean, overall, I can't really say anything bad about this unit. I mean, it's, it's solid, it works, and it's one of the first ones I've seen that's really truly upgradable by design. Now, like I said, you can you can upgrade the other ones too if you want, but you're gonna have to do a lot of different things in order to be able to make that truly happen. This is designed to be upgraded. This is designed to have uh, those parts uh, changed out and made into what they need to be made into. And that really is a very exciting component to this. Um, overall, I would say definitely I recommend this. I think this is great for the person who's getting started with uh, lasers. I think this is a great starter. I think this is a great growing opportunity for people who plan on going and maybe making this into a little bit more of a business or you're going to be getting more serious about it or you think you might. Um, this is not a bad way to go. Uh, the assembly was pretty straightforward overall. Uh, there really wasn't much to it. You just have to pay attention to little intricacies and you're going to do fine. So, um, Also having the additional safety features on here like uh, this right here, which allows you to actually literally use a key in order to be able to turn the machine on or off. So that way, you know, if you got kids or something, they're not in here messing with the laser. And you also have an emergency stop button too, in case something goes really seriously wrong, like, I don't know, a piece of wood catches on fire. I mean, things happen, they really do. So you do have that function as well. Um, it does have some other ports on here. Uh, it has a thing on here called the screen port. Um, I don't really entirely know what a screen port is. To me, it looks like an Ethernet port. I'm an IT guy, so let's keep that in mind. Um, I didn't really do much investigating of that because it didn't seem to really affect the ability to use the machine. Uh, it does have also an I.O. port on here, which I do believe is for uh, glass turning and stuff like that. So if you need a fire on a glass, which you can do on this one, by the way, uh, you could definitely do that. Uh, so it does have that. Uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of the basics to it. Um, I hope this review really helps you out. Uh, I know that we're uh, moving into the holiday season, so uh, sometimes people are looking to buy these, sometimes people are looking to make things with these. It doesn't really matter which end of the spectrum you're at. Uh, this is probably going to be a really good buy. Um, but, you know, like I always tell people, I'm like, keep in mind that the wattage of the laser does make a difference. So. You know, if it's 5.5 watts, then you're going to be able to engrave, you're going to be able to cut thin stock. If you're looking to cut thicker stock, then you may want to look for like a 20 plus watt is an example. If you're trying to cut like, you know, a uh, half inch, uh, three quarter inch, you know, solid wood. You know, you may need even say have something even uh, higher end than even that. So, you know, in some cases you may be looking in the sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000 range. So long story made short, this isn't any of those things. It's a great cutter for thin stock. It's a great idea if you're trying to make uh, thin things, uh, which a lot of laser art is thin, so that actually kind of works out really. And if you're looking to just engrave things, um, this is going to be perfectly fine for just about any material that you would commonly fire on a laser. So I hope that helps out. In the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe, check our links down below and hit that bell notification icon for all of our newest videos. Have a happy and safe holiday season, and we'll see you next time here in the shop.